how we made it. This morning I'm going to make peach jam. I just want to go through a couple of things uh, for the difference between jelly, jam, and preserves. So a jelly is clear. That's the juice that's used from the fruit. A jam has pieces of fruit in it, small, or the whole fruit has been pureed with the juice. And preserves have actual chunks. I mean, you'll get a big chunk inside. So you're actually preserving larger chunks of fruit. You haven't pureed it by any stretch of the imagination, but you haven't chopped it very small. What I've done is I've taken the peaches and the parts that, they weren't bruised parts, but they weren't very pretty. They were a little bit smushed. So I went ahead and I saved those. I've already gone ahead and I've chopped mine up very fine. I've used this, and I really hate it when someone uses something that not everybody has, but I did it. All right, so this is a hand blender, and I just set it in my container of peaches, and it chops it up very finely. If you'll notice, there's a rotary blade there on the bottom. Didn't take more than about 10 seconds. You don't have to chop it that way. You can chop it by hand with a knife. I say it, chop the fruit. All right, let me go over a couple of the products I like to use. Sure Gel is the brand name. Shout out to Sure Gel. I sure could take a kickback. I don't mind. I use two different kinds. This one is a liquid type that I've just used in the last year and a half. And it's from the makers of Sure, uh, sure Gel. There's Serto. Anyway, it comes like this in a smushy pack. I have had failures the last two times, and what I mean by failures is the jam and jelly didn't set. So, hmm, I'm going to wait for that. I don't know, I'm not real happy with them right now. See, they fell over. You're death to me. All right, and then sure gel. This one uses sugar in this yellow package. You have to use sugar, white cane sugar. If you want to have low sugar or no sugar, honey or a Splenda, look for the sure gel in the pink box. You can find it at all your fine food stores, as well as places like um, Value Home Centers, and I know for a fact. So shout out to Scott Marniak, you can get your jars and your lids and your sure gel. It's canning season. When you open up the package of the small box, you'll find that this pectin is actually a powder. It's like a jello, but it, okay, I won't go into the similarities. One is made with fruit and one is made with <coughs> other things. So jello is made with other things. This is made from the fruit pectin. It also comes with a handy dandy guide on jams, jellies, and preserves. I looked under the cooking directions for jam recipes. And they list all the different kinds of fruits you may want to. And I went to peach. And I'm just going to hold it there for a moment so you can see the amounts. The frightening amounts of sugar that you will need. All right. I've already measured that sugar out. I've put it in my saucepan. It's heavy duty. Again, you say, Cindy, I can't afford a heavy duty saucepan. What are you doing to me? Well, what I like to do is I like to go to my handy dandy thrift stores and I go and I find somebody who's rich and they've gotten rid of their nice saucepans and gone to something more expensive. And so I buy their old ones for two to five dollars. Often there's a lid, so look for the ones with a lid. All right, I'm gonna step back for a minute here. What am I talking about? I have my fruit prepared. It already had lemon in it because if you will recall from our peach recipes, just canning peaches. I put the peaches in a lemon and water bath to keep them from changing color too much. I'm melting. It is 90 degrees outside and it's just barely 9 o'clock in the morning. So shout out to all my southern friends. I'm feeling you. I have my sugar here and according to my recipe, prepare the lids in the jars as directed. Okay, so I'm going to do what I did before. I've got my jars inside my oven, which is another reason why I'm boiling to death. My lids are right here. Thank you for dinging. My lids are here on top. So they're already, because I've washed them, and I've set them in the boiling water for sterilization. Clean jars sterilized, keeping hot at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Lids and the rings 
are keeping perfect up there. Yeah, it's warm. I'm going to be like Louis Armstrong. This is a wonderful world. So, besides being a wonderful world, we're ready. Prepare the fruit as directed on the chart. I prepared mine. You can chop yours. Again, this is a dollar store item, this plastic thing here. If it ain't cheap, it ain't me. Shout out to Lisa Nally. All right, so I got my four cups pre-measured. I'm going to jam that right down into my sugar. I like to have everything handy when I cook. If you can set up your kitchen, you'll really be happy. stir this again dollar store set of four dollar store there it is a white spoon nothing fancy and I'm going to stir the sugar and the fruit down together I'm going to put it on a low heat because it's going to get together pretty quickly there you go see and you didn't trust me so place three layers of a damp cheesecloth or a jelly bag in a large bowl no, that's for jelly directions. I'm going to have to heat this into a rolling boil, so I'm going to have to say goodbye for now because I am melting, as you can see. I am heating up hotter than something. All right, I'll see you in a minute when this is at a full rolling boil, and I'll show you how that works. Still making the jam I talked about. My jam right now is very close to being uh, jelly, but I didn't clear it out with any cheesecloth as the instructions will tell you to do. Let's just go over what I have. I have pint jars inside my oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. I have lids and rings for regular or small mouth jars, and they're here in a hot water bath. I wanted to show you this quick because now my uh, jam solution of just sugar and just the fruit that I pureed, that's starting to boil now. I've put it on a high heat. Coming back, I wanted to get right to it. I want to show you what a rolling boil looks like because you need to bring it up to a rolling boil and you'll start to see that come up rather quickly. So I want to open up my pectin bag. Now a rolling boil, here it goes. Before I started the video, I brought it to a rolling boil and brought it back just so I could show you how it starts to move up the side of the pan as well. And the more I stir it, it doesn't matter. A rolling boil won't stop boiling. Okay, so you'll want to stay through the heating process, getting it to a rolling boil. I need to set my timer for a minute. I also want to be really careful as this goes through the boiling process to continue to stir. In the instructions within the Serto pack, it does tell you to put in a bit of butter to hold back the foam. And it really did help that I stopped the foaming action by turning off the heat to kind of give you this view of the rolling boil. And the rolling boil happens for one minute. You keep moving it. If you don't move it, it'll begin to burn right on the bottom of your pan. This is why you want a very heavy-duty, non-aluminum, you want a stainless steel. If you want to work with a Teflon pan, uh, make sure it's really one of the newer varieties. Teflon really, ouch, back in the day, and that just bit me. This is basically turning into a candy, and if it spits on you, you're going to get burnt. So we want to keep it down as best we can. And I may turn this camera right back over to its stand. Kind of dangerous to show you both, but hey, you know, you're worth a good burn. Okay, I'm going to put it right up here. Sorry for the ad nauseum or the actual nauseum. That's just telling me it was at a rolling boil for one minute. If you're using a liquid pectin, that goes in as well. thicker and I press the pack 
pecked it up against the side. It may want to come into clumps. You may want to add a little bit of the juice to that pectin so you're pouring in the expectant amount, full amount of juice. Again, read those instructions carefully. Be very careful that you're exact. And now I need to bring it to a rolling boil again. It's not going to do that right away. You'll see again from well, the last time we made strawberry jelly that I'm going to have a funnel to help me as well as my handy dandy one cup ladle. So here's my ladle. Notice I'm still stirring. I'm ambi, ambidextrous. So I have my one cup ladle. I have my expandable funnel. That's a canning funnel. If you have a rigid one, that means fully a hard side. I just bought this because I need more room in my the drawers in my kitchen. I almost said I almost need more room in my drawers. I don't need them in my pants. Then I'm using a pint. All right, everybody, if your kids are working with you, how many cups are in a pint? There's two cups in a pint. A lot of people use jelly jars. We just eat jelly. Not going to lie. So there's two cups in there. Normally you use a jelly jar that's small and it's cute. This will burn you. This is not a silly thing at all. We're going to be very careful. We're going to continue to fill the jars. You'll leave that half inch of head space. If you were doing wax, you know, you could leave an inch. You know, it wouldn't matter. But because I'm dealing here with this jelly, I do want to process it. You'll notice that I'm not using any type of a water bath. This is something I learned from Mark's mom and dad. And they canned for, for four, probably 63 years together. Now these are very hot. The peaches before, um, when we did just peaches, they were cool. Okay, They were much cooler. This is honest to God hot. So I'm putting it over here on a prepared thing. Sorry folks, who's ever calling. But then I start to cover them again. One right after another. This particular recipe calls for seven cups. I think it's another one of those situations where, I don't know, I just feel a little ripped off because I know that it used to make eight. Um, so I'm like, hmm, you know, I realize that Things are tough for big companies, only making a couple of million there at the top every year. But it'll only make seven. So what will happen is I'll fill three jars, two cups each. Then my last jar, I can either do a small pint, uh, pardon me, a small cup jelly jar, or I can just fill it part way and use that as, well, guess what, we have fresh peach jam right away. Listen, I'm glad I'm doing it so you don't feel like, well, well, what did I do wrong? You know, I measured the ingredients. Maybe I hit, no, I put a lid on it when I was, uh, when I left to do other things today. So, there's that. This is going to turn into candy, so you want to put hot water bath right away. 24 hours before you refrigerate it, before you move them, so put them in a real safe spot. They're not going to get knocked over or accidentally bumped. So, what do I have? Out of a recipe that some certain company promised would give me seven cups. I just want to make sure I look at that again. Three pounds of peaches and a lemon, peeled, pitted, finely chopped. I add, let's see, four cups of finely chopped peaches, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, which again, I omitted because my peaches had been in that. Then five and a half cups of sugar should render me seven cups. Oddly enough, it didn't. Regardless, I have six cups. I put it in two cups in each of those pint jars, just because that's the level that we use our jams and jellies at. I really hope that that helped. Again, if you have some questions, go ahead, leave them for me. Give me a call. You know I'll just eventually answer you. All right. Hope you have a great day.